Um, the second special site is anything that is the, what gives you a risk of cord compression, of spinal cord compression, obviously of paralysis, and, and, we, and that's the vertebral body lesion that has a soft tissue mass compressing the spinal cord, and this is obviously an area that has to be treated and treated ur- you know, as, a, as a matter of um, some urgency. These patients do require an MRI scan um, to assess the, the compression and do require therapy if there's any compression. So this is certainly a special site for us, even though from a life point of view it's not life-threatening, but it is of course threatening. And there have been cases of paralysis that, with these lesions that have been described. And this is just to show you the classic, it's called vertebra plana, meaning flat really, flattened vertebral body. And this is a pretty classic appearance, and certainly LCH would be by far the commonest cause of this appearance on an X-ray. Um, just a couple of other points about this. Um, you know, so here you're not seeing a soft tissue mass, obviously, um, around the the area, but you do need to look for that. The second point is, if this is a single lesion. This is probably the only time you don't need to do a biopsy. And the orthopedic surgeons would tell you you have to go right past the spinal cord to get into the bone to do the biopsy. The risk in this area outweighs the benefit of biopsy. So if this is a single bone, what we tend to do is just watch this, but you do have to watch it carefully because there are some case reports in the literature of a malignant tumor called a Ewing sarcoma that was initially diagnosed as LCH. But so you, you wouldn't biopsy it, but you would watch it carefully because um, the risk of biopsy is it does outweigh, in this case, the benefit. But if it's not a single bone, obviously there's other areas to biopsy, so the, the, it doesn't arise. But it quite often presents with the single flattened bone, and that, that we do not biopsy. At least I certainly don't, and, and my orthopedic surgeon won't. So the next um, question is, if you have a diagnosis of bone LCH, and obviously for all other areas we do diagnose it, the first lesion is diagnosed pathologically, so you need a biopsy. What investigations do absolutely need to be done. So well, what are we looking for? We need to know if it's a single bone or it's multiple bone because of course well, how we treat depends on that. So that's the first reason we investigate it and the second reason is of course you need to know if it's only bone or if indeed this is multi-system disease. Is there disease outside of the bone? And remember too that not all lesions, not all bone LCH causes symptoms. So you may have a, le- a bone thing in a patient, nothing else. They say, well, they can't be. There's no pain anywhere else. There's no swelling anywhere else. That does not exclude multifocal bone. Absolutely, categorically not, because not all bone areas will you see a symptom. You may get that and do the skeletal survey and you may find a number of different um, lesions. So every patient with the first diagnosis needs x-ray of all the bones and and plain x-rays of the bones is the best way to detect these lesions. We do do, as I mentioned this morning, bone scan as well because some of them, some of them can be missed on x-ray, less are missed on x-ray than on bone scan. So if you had to choose one, you choose the x-ray, but you don't fortunately usually have to choose. So we usually do both. So skeletal survey and bone scan. And and here's the classic lytic, which means the punched out lesion of bone. But they, they can look very differently. They can look exactly like malignant areas in bone. And, and there's no, the radiologist will tell you, there is no CT or even MRI appearance that can clearly distinguish that particular presentation of LCH from malignancy. And so that's of course requires a biopsy but when they follow those they do just as well as the regular presentation so it does not mean that it's a bad disease it just looks initially like a bad disease is it important for people to know that well I fell into that trap because I had a patient with an orbital lesion and there was a soft tissue mass that was right up against the optic nerve so the problem if this is a malignant tumor is of blindness if you don't react very quickly so we sent the child for urgent radiation 
therapy and then got the biopsy result, which was LCH. So I learned to lessen in that situation. Now, you know, radiation works in LCH, but we tend to, to shy away from it for reasons that you heard this morning. So I think um, you have to remember that LCH, le- or we do, that LCH lesions can look like malignant tumors um, as well as this classic punched out lesion. Um, anyway, this is also then, you see, multifocal bone, um, a skull bone, and you can see this is an unusual sort of picture with, to have this many, but it does occur. And this is a bone scan, and you can see the areas here in the, in the bones of the face. You can also see the areas here in the vertebral bodies, an area in the rib over there. Um, so the number of areas, and this is after treatment, um, and I'm not for want of time going into the problems of follow-up of, uh, to tell which lesions are active or not at this time. Anyway, so this is the workup for every patient. This is the workup to see if there are other areas involved. So to see if there are other bones, it's skeletal survey and bone scan, to see if there are other, as, as other um, organs involved. We usually rely on chest x-ray, ultrasound, not too much radiation dose, obviously. Certainly a blood count, particularly the very young child, and liver function studies, and we usually add in kidney and other blood tests as well. But these are what you really need. Do we need more intensive, sort of more radiation dose things? And the answer is I, only if you really think it's indicated. So CT scan of the skull is certainly better than an X-ray. I mean, clearly it's better. So if you want to see what's happening around the orbit in the ear, then clearly you need a CT. And it's useful also even for bigger bone areas, even in the skull, because it can show you the soft tissue mass. And I just wanted to show you one example of that. And here you can see this is a big area. It's still a single bone, but it's a big area here. And you can see the soft tissue mass in this case going inwards, so it's on either side of the hole in the bone and actually compressing part of the brain here in this area. So, it, you know, in big lesions, I think, yes, I would do a CT head. In anything involving the front of the face, I would as well do a CT head. What about the MRI of the brain? Well, you heard from Dr. Whitlock this morning that you tend to do it only for patients with risk bones, or certainly if they have diabetes insipidus, you would want to do that as well, and then repeat that once a year, but I do not do it routinely in every patient with bone LCH. There is a downside to it, you heard this morning. Some of the kids even need general anesthetic, never mind sedation for this. Um, So you've got to weigh it up. Um, CT chest, very useful for diagnosis of lung LCH. Do you need it in every patient? Clearly not. If the x-ray is normal, if there's no symptoms of lung disease, particularly on a little bit of an older child, you do not need a see to chest with a radiation exposure of that. Chest x-ray alone is fine. And then an MRI of the spine, obviously we talked about that for spine lesions. So what happens to bone lesions? What's the outcome? What can you, what, and this of course is a question parents ask all the time. You diagnose this, what's going to happen to the child? So again, we went back and I found this actually a very useful study that we did because we, for most of the pa- people, if it's a single bone lesion, you can be pretty reassuring that mostly they don't recur and don't come back and very rarely do you get diabetes insipidus. So in our series, we only had a, a, you know 12%, so 88% never recurred again. And most of these were, did not receive chemotherapy. Most of them only had biopsy or curetting out the center of the bone. So single bone usually does very well. Multifocal bone usually does well, but certainly there's a higher incidence of the disease recurring and coming back, and sometimes it becomes chronic and many times, and of course then the incidence of diabetes insipidus went up.